Morning all. Natalia Pogonina continues to do very well in the Russian Women's Super Finals. Here is another really impressive, nice game. She's playing black against Avenger Ovid, a 2 4 1 9. So Natalia is 2 4 4 8 at the moment, but uh, after this tournament will be going up surely. So d4, and Natalia chooses actually the Nimzo Indian defense. After knight c3, bishop b4, pinning the knight, brainchild of Aaron Nimzovich this system. White plays e3, which is the Rubenstein variation. Rubenstein, a very strong player, one of the strongest in the world. Maybe he, he couldn't raise uh, the fees to be a, a serious world title uh, challenger, but uh, a fantastic player in his own right. Okay. Black castles, bishop d3. Now Natalia plays c5, putting some pressure straight away on d4. White protects d4, and now we see b6. So black is potentially putting the bishop here to put exert more pressure on e4, and maybe doubling pawns. Not worried at the moment about white playing bishop d2, uh, giving the white chance maybe to wriggle out of getting double pawns here. But instead, white encourages black uh, to double the pawns, maybe thinking, that uh, it would strengthen the center. The bishop's got no retreat after that c5, so it's basically forced, unless it wants to go to a5, which looks very awkward. It's basically forced to capture on c3. So, okay, double pawns versus the bishop pair. Maybe white can liberate later, that's the plan, and maybe this bishop will be very good later. That's the plan from white, looking at this positively, this imbalance of trump cards. Bishop b7, black enjoys good control, over e4 at the moment. White can test that control and offers double pawns here, which would be unwise perhaps with the, the king sitting there on the g file to play bishop f3 here. Instead, d6. So keeping a nice restrained blockade strategy, Alan Nimzovich. And uh, d6, you know, maybe to follow up with knight d7, e5 at some point. Such a plan, you'd have to be wary a little bit about the light squares if that was the plan chosen. So, after e4, in fact, Okay, white is immediately threatening a nasty pin. So some concession maybe has to be made to stop the pin, creating its own weaknesses as well. But otherwise, also e5 looks dangerous, dislodging the knight and using uh, that battery to win a pawn potentially. So this next move by Natalia ticks the boxes. It's, it, it's uh, guards against e5 winning a pawn and it prevents bishop g5 pinning that knight. We see now d5. Okay, this does shut down the light square bishop for the moment. Tony is not too worried. She's not too keen to close up the position with e5. So maybe this is an instructive point. Maybe e5 does does cause black's position to be unnecessarily passive and inflexible at this moment. Instead, rook e8 is played. Okay, so black is reserving that option of e takes d for a, for a move or two. After castles, in fact, reserved again knight bd7. And now, black might also be keen on playing knight f8. Or at some point, taking a knight e5. A few possibilities here. White plays a4. And black is uh, not wanting white to play a5 here, which would get rid of basically an isolated pawn. Uh, plays a5, which, okay, b6, is that really weak? It's a pawn in a semi-open file. But it's, is it really exploitable? Not really in this position. It doesn't look that easily exploitable anyway from human eyes. Okay, so it's a concession. It's fixing down more of white's pawns on the queen side. Rook b1, and now rook b8. Rook e1, and now knight f8. So again, the instructive point I think so far, the one of the main ones is black not having to play e5, waiting here on that e5 possibility, or the you know keeping the option of ed. Bishop f4 now, and it looks as though the importance of playing e5 has just increased, because maybe e5 from white would liberate this dark square bishop a bit. The bishop is actually attacked with knight g6, that's an important point of knight f8 to be able to play this knight g6. Bishop g3, and here just at the moment where white really is threatening now e5, which would liberate you know these guys it's important now, it seems, to play the move e5. 
OK, it shuts down the bishop as far as this is, this diagonal is concerned, but the bishop's got this diagonal, or this one, to attack c4 later. From there it could actually put pressure on a4. So there's a few targets here. White plays now knight h4, an interesting move, encouraging an exchange of knights, but the bishop can be shut down again with a forcing sequence. Knight takes, and now the forcing move g3, shutting down that bishop. Okay, and you might argue, well, the bishop could do this, but what is it? It's just biting on c5. That's been reinforced. This looks more of a liability at the moment, but after bishop c8, it's, it shows that so Natalia is very keen on on making sure that can be defended. <laughs> okay, and the bishop doesn't look too bad at the moment, and this bishop does look a bit locked out of the game, as well as this one. So, is this the most lively minor piece at the moment on the board? After h4, that minor piece has actually moved here, knight h5, threatening maybe uh, to take, or just knight f4, just to sort of keep a grip on the position. In fact, after queen d2, Tolia again is not keen to play any committal pawn move here, keeps the tension, plays king g7. Nothing committal needed at the moment. Not knight g3, not g takes, not knight f4. Just until that knight is actually attacked, maybe, no need to do anything. hg, which uh, seems to give black the potential for this h file actually, after hg, looks a little bit passive for white. So we have a potential attack brewing, uh, which becomes quite evident now after bishop h2, we see rook h8. So black's rooks look to be, well, especially this one. To be starting to look more active than white's rooks. F3, okay, weakening some more dark squares. Bishop D7 targeting A4, just in case that's that's nice. That will create a nice passed A pawn. That's protected. And then we see Knight F4. If we have Bishop takes F4 here, then G takes looks very juicy with Queen G5 coming up, I'm really marking out the dark squares. Really strong bind on the position. Bishop g3 is instead play, but now queen f6. And it looks as though black can naturally build up pressure on the h file. King f2, okay, is the king making a run for it? Tanya now plays g4 here, really hitting g2 and f3 a bit harder now. Rook h1, and now a beautiful move here. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, knight takes g2. Black seems to be uh, crashing through here. It looks pretty grim if taking that's a total disaster. Clearly, after queen takes f3, actually get mated. And um, so, in the game, that was ignored with rook takes h8. And there's a question here can black play queen takes? F3. Queen takes F3 might have a weakness of the last move. It's not protecting G5, which leaves Queen G5 as a resource. So instead, actually, entirely is king just to play Rook takes H8 in this position. Uh, still not minding, of course, King takes G2 is not bad to have Queen takes F3 and Rook H1 mate in any case, and still holding up that G5 square. Uh, so let's have a Quick peek though, if queen takes f3, it's unnecessary risk taking. King g1, and it's unnecessary to allow, allow this uh, queen g5 or queen h6 invasion. It's completely unnecessary and was avoided. So this, this looks rather neat just to uh, play rook takes h8. Keeping all the threats. So the one on f3 is now defended with bishop d1. It seems a fairly hopeless position at the moment. Knight f4. Okay, this looks still really good fun for black in this position. But what of the b6 weakness? Well, that's offered here, and it's taken in this position. And now we see knight h5. So immediate threats look like knight takes g3, king takes queen h4. That looks an absolutely crushing attack. Black now tries to get the queen off g5 more radically now with rook takes d6, a rook 
uh, decoy away from that uh, or deflection away from that defensive square. It's taken here though. Queen g5 check, just queen g6 is played. So what is the purpose of this rook sack? White plays on with bishop takes e5 check. Okay. So black is a rook up, plays f6, and that seems to be holding the fort here. Queen takes g6, king takes. Bishop d6, white is playing a rook down. It looks pretty disastrous. g3 check. Now king g5, implying that knight f4 might be next, and this pawn mobility is not going to see the light of day. White plays f4 check, that's just taken. Check, and now rook h3. Black is a rook up. It was a very, very neat uh, positional game. I think Nimzovic would be proud of the way Natalia played this. Uh, not just uh, the restraint blockade, but uh, the maintaining of tension in the position, not showing any weaknesses of the last move. Showing that the threat is stronger than the execution sometimes of things. If we look back at this game, it's a very neat Nimzo Indian demonstration. C5, and now B6. So white, seemingly not concerned about um, the prophylaxis potential of black and to blockade the position and prevent. White's dynamism seen like the day. H6, a pivotal pivotal move, stopping both bishop g5 and e5 winning a pawn. So this d5, it seems, yes, this light square bishop never really saw uh, some activity in this game. And b6 didn't really turn out to be a major weakness. Uh, this knight f8, very nifty, anticipating you know bishop f4. The bishop tried to find this diagonal later, but uh, it didn't really help with g5 putting it back out of uh, the game. So here, it seems black was really in control already of the position quite easily. Not much counterplay, really, from white to have to worry about. In fact, very passive position here. Like f4, queen f6. And going in for a potentially crushing attack, queen h6, queen h1, queen g2, for example. After king f2, g4, we have a nice breakthrough move. Knight takes g2. So could white have fared any better here? Quick engine check. It's better for black. Maybe queen e3, bishop f4, but it was still technically better for black. Uh, so this blunder accentuated. Uh, Black's advantage massively. Knight takes g2, it would seem. So it seems white's fairly uh, defenseless here. After knight f4, it doesn't matter about b6, it seems, because now actually this swinging knight maneuver is also instructive, uh, going for white's king safety really, offering b6 to really hammer in those dark squares to get rid of the dark square bishop. So knight h5, and it's very dangerous, bishop h2, queen h4 anyway. So knight g3, major, major threat here. And white out of desperation maybe played rook takes d6. Is it actually clinically uh, lost in this position? It looks fairly dire, it looks as though rook d6 is actually recommended by the engines here. That's one of the only moves. Minus three. This game continuation, largely engine anticipated. Okay, maybe uh, it's just it's all pretty hopeless. It's a rook down. <laughs> okay, I um, hope you enjoyed that game. I thought it was pretty neat and positional, a positional attack without much risk. Contrast that to the other game we saw. This was uh, without risk and still a nice attacking game. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.